Final Cut running on the Mac Pro. And look how quickly I can change fonts. Just switched over to my MacBook Pro, exact same project, but now let's try changing the fonts. It's a lot slower as you can see. Hey guys, I've been looking for a computer to up my video editing game. So currently I'm using a MacBook Pro 13 inch and it works really well most of the time. However, it does clug along, especially when doing 4K or playing with any effects. So, with doing a lot of research, I could have built my own Hackintosh, I could have got the new Mac Pro. I've decided to go get myself a brand new, old Mac Pro. Now this is the 2010, seven year old computer, almost eight, 2010 edition of the Mac Pro. And the reason why I got this guy is it was super cheap. I got it for $600, second hand from Green Gadgets. They buy it off you for around $60 to $300. However, they sell it on but they provide a six month warranty and ensure that it's working correctly. So I'm happy to pay that. But the cool thing about this model is you can upgrade it. So I'm gonna be installing an SSD, I'm gonna be installing new Wi-Fi card, I'm gonna be installing the latest and greatest graphics card. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be a monster. So if you're thinking about getting a new Mac Pro, join this guide and I'll show you the results. Power cable, a bit dirty. Oh, it's a beast. Alright, so before cleaning up the inside and upgrading all the internals, I just want to see how this fella performs out of the box, stock, and how noisy is it? Alright, I gotta say, I'm really impressed. This is the quietest desktop I've ever heard. If you know how to use voiceover, press Command F5 now to turn it on. Whoa. It's a big guy. Alright, problem number one. The current graphics card doesn't support HDMI. Whoa, it's huge! It's massive. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be this big. Are you really going to put it here? It's huge, babe. It's really big. <laughs> Whoa. Hi, I'm a regular person and I do lots of work. Beep boop. Beep boop. Is that the iPhone 10 sitting on someone's underwear? <laughs> Just to make sure it doesn't get scratched. <laughs> Looking into the performance on Geekbench 3 32 2 bit, the base Mac Pro was about the same speed as the MacBook Pro I was using. Upgrading to the 6 core unit yielded about twice the multi core score, which is about the same level as a mid 2017 i5 iMac. Over to Synbench, the score of the base Mac Pro actually beat out the MacBook Pro, but the upgrade Mac Pro yielded an extra 50 70% on top of that. 70 frames a second is actually number one on the list. Better than a Quadro K 4000M. It's just under an i7 4770K and above the 3770K. 
and the best part about this experience is just have a listen. This is how quiet the system is running. And for comparison, this is how the Synology is sounding. The MacBook Pro couldn't be touched on the read and write speeds even when using a PCIe SSD. Interestingly enough, I didn't notice any real world performance differences using a PCIe SSD over a SATA 2 SSD. Even though the MacBook Pro had a much faster SSD performance according to Blackmagic speed test, launching Final Cut Pro in Photoshop was actually faster on the upgraded Mac Pro which is something worth paying attention to, as it's not just about transfer speeds. File seek speeds is usually more important, as apps tend to require lots of different files on launch rather than reading one big file read fast. 4K playback of projects using custom titles still skipped the frames until background rendering was used, which is something even the iMac Pro suffers from. Scrubbing 4K footage sourced on my local NAS was much faster on the upgraded version. Bruce X 5K export was three times faster than my MacBook Pro. However, one thing that was actually slow by a large margin was video encoding, especially when using non-standard codecs. That being said, background processing was a lot faster, almost iMac Pro level fast, and using the editor was a lot smoother. So I'm moving this and it's pretty snappy. Compiling code was much faster, and even using the Mac Pro on its default AO211N and not AC Wi-Fi, YouTube finally played back to 4K at 2K speeds without constantly buffering. Playing Windows games on Parallels, which is a virtual machine emulator, at 1080p went from 15 frames a second to 29 frames. And when gaming on Windows directly, it was a night and day difference. Can't even handle the menu screens. <laughs> One of the coolest things I found was you can actually mine crypto coins in the background and still hit 30 frames a second. So is this a good machine to get in 2018? Well, the thing is, the best Mac out there right now is the iMac Pro and it starts at 5,000 American dollars. This bad boy under a thousand dollars you can customize it with your own graphics card you can sell off all your old parts you can get USB-C no Thunderbolt though and there are a bit of quirks here and there however it's under a thousand dollars and it runs faster than my MacBook Pro on everything it plays the best games it runs Photoshop it runs Final Cut Pro smoothly the only thing it can't do is unfortunately video encoding it, it kind of sucks on that if I were to do it again, I'd get the 12-core version instead of the 6-core. So max out two Xeons there. And that would be a really nice system to get. For the price though, i I got to say this is a really good deal. If you find a cheap Mac Pro loitering around on eBay or anything like that, get it. You can upgrade it and it will run really nice. For me, has it boosted my productivity? And the thing i got to truthfully say is it hasn't. I've got seven years, seven, eight years of gaming to catch up on. So me and my girl, we've just been hitting this machine, playing all the latest games, clocking Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is actually, that one's rubbish. Assassin's Creed Unity, that one's good. You've got at least a bit of a love story over there. I've been playing Batman, oh my God. Yeah, so many, and Tomb Raider. Perfect. 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 I got right. Hey, 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 jump! X! There you go, climb up. Now run, run, run. I'm trying! Jump! Run, run. That is an awesome game. So I've been playing all these cool games, been wasting all my time with this machine. It runs really fast. I love it to bits. The big negatives I'd say is there are a few quirks, like for example, if you are using a beefy graphics card like this one, 
you're not going to get the boot screen so you're going to have to keep the original Mac verified graphics card that you get with the computer so you can always get that boot screen and that helps you with switching for example OS's when going from boot camp over back to Mac without doing the whole reset the PRAM trick and um, you, you can mine cryptocurrency I'm getting about four dollars a day and you can even play games at the same time and the thing is when you're playing games it maxes out the watts you're using your your computer for so if you do a bit of cryptocurrency on the side it's actually technically free because you're using that wattage on gaming anyway that was uh, a pretty fun experience there would I get this over a Hackintosh because Hackintoshes you can build them out yourself and they can go a bit cheap I did because I've seen the, the amount of effort you have to put into a Hackintosh and supporting it on OS upgrades and all that kind of stuff and it's a nightmare I mean I've been playing with Clover and it's a bit of a nightmare so if you are technically savvy and you've had years of experiences building out Hackintoshes yeah stick to doing that but if you're new to the game starting out on this project will level up your experiences for example right now I'm a bit more confident to build my own Hackintosh with, with, with the good thing about this Mac Pro, it is currently supported so you can go, and go to High Sierra. Actually, Apple released um, a BIOS update for this system to support AFPS, their new file system. So it is still being supported, which is great news. Whereas Hackintosh is, every single time there's an OS update, you're pretty much effed. And even installing custom graphics cards like this one is supported because um, I'm on the latest developer preview of High Sierra and it actually works with this RX 580 out of the box. You don't get a boot screen of course, but it's registered in the about section and HDMI audio now works. So as long as they don't break down a future update, that's pretty good. Would I get this over the current Mac Pro? Well, the current Mac Pro hasn't been upgraded in four years and its performance is actually not that good. With this one, at least you can upgrade the graphics cards with the current Mac Pro you're pretty much stuck with the R9s that they're currently in there. So I would definitely get the classic Mac Pro, the 5.1 edition, over the current generation Mac Pro. Hopefully they'll release that 2018 Mac Pro and that one would be a good candidate to get because that would hopefully be upgradable. So overall, I think it's a decent system. For me, unfortunately, I've been playing too much games on it, so I haven't been as productive as I hoped I'd be. But things can also change. If you are interested in getting one of these systems and upgraded it, stay tuned because I've got another video explaining all the parts I've used, all the steps I took to upgrade it, upgrading the CPU, the RAM, the graphics card, all that kind of stuff in another video. And I also have another video on cryptocurrency and mining on this uh, computer and you can also mine it on your own computer out there. Stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments or would like me to test anything in particular, let me know in the comment section below and thanks again for watching. Take it easy guys. <laughs> Run straight and then get X, 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 X,